Some time ago, I posted a video about the relatively weak stabilization features of my Sony Alpha camera. And I got a comment that got me thinking. She wrote, we were very disappointed to find out that our iPhones can shoot more stable footage than the a7R 3 And she's not wrong. An iPhone really does do a better job stabilizing footage than most of these big cameras do. That's actually a good thing. And I'm gonna tell you why. Modern phones and action cameras actually have some really remarkable stabilization footage built right into them. For example, check out this footage from GoPro's HyperSmooth technology. It's really incredible. They do a lot of advanced processing to make this happen, and the results are undeniably awesome. And here's some stabilized footage from an iPhone, which has even more processing power, so sometimes it does an even better job than the GoPro of stabilizing the footage. And then you go out and drop some thousands of dollars on a professional grade camera and find out that it does almost no stabilization at all. That's crazy, right? Well, it's actually not as crazy as it might seem. There are a lot of steps involved in recording and processing a video. A typical phone video isn't just recording what the phone camera sees. It's actually doing a ton of post-production on it to make that video look as spiffy as possible. It's doing sharpening, color correction, color grading, AI retouching, and then it's compressing the file to make it fit on the file system. The end result is typically a pretty good looking video, but as a creator, you don't actually get much say in it and you can't make it much better. Unless you're using special software on your phone, you actually don't have a lot of control over things like the frame rate and the exposure and the aperture. And even with that software, those options are very limited. And if you want the footage sharpened differently or something like that, you actually can't go back and fix it. Once it's locked in, that's the video. It is what it is. Yeah, you can tweak it a little bit in your video editor, but most of what it is is now baked in. There's no raw footage that you can go back to. The video is the video. Now, professional video people typically want control over those things so they can maximize their footage and get the most out of it possible. That means that professional or prosumer cameras don't prioritize all that AI stuff that the phones are doing. Yes, the phone footage does look a little better straight out of camera, but there's a ceiling to it. You can't make it much better than that. With the raw footage you get from a professional or a prosumer camera, it doesn't look as good coming straight out of the camera, but you can maximize what you get out of it to get the better looking footage in the end. Stabilization is a similar issue. Once that footage is stabilized in camera, you can't do it any differently. It just is what it is. And it's limited by whatever the processing power of the camera itself is. It's whatever chip is inside the GoPro or inside the iPhone. That's what it's using to do all that processing. Now consider the relative power of the computer that you're using to edit video footage. It probably has more processing power than the phone or action camera does. It also offers you a lot more options about exactly how you perform that stabilization so you can get the effect that you want. A professional or prosumer camera is generally gonna assume that if you're trying to get stable footage, you're probably using a gimbal or a tripod or something. So they don't prioritize stabilization as a core feature. They know that for more professional work, you're trying to stabilize it in camera as much as you can, and then you can do the cleanup in the editing software. That's just how they're optimized. Basically, you just have to make a decision about what kind of footage you're trying to record, how you're trying to record it, and what you're trying to do with it. It's like a sandwich. You can go out to a bakery and get a fresh loaf of bread and then go to the deli and get some great meats and you put it all together and you make an amazing sandwich. Or you can go to the gas station and get a soggy three-day-old tuna salad sandwich. No judgment. Either one might be the right answer for the situation you're in. When I'm on a road trip and I have to stop somewhere for two minutes to go in and use the bathroom and try to find something to eat, I'm getting the soggy tuna sandwich. Sometimes that's the right answer and sometimes it's not. Similarly, if you're trying to do a quick turnaround video on a limited budget with limited resources, sometimes a phone or action camera is totally the right answer. Or if you're making an action video where you can't mount a gimbal to someone's helmet, of course, use the action camera. One of these isn't better than the other, they're just optimized for different purposes. You have to understand the purpose of what you're doing and that's gonna inform which hardware you need to make it happen. As with most things in life, only you can figure out the path that makes sense for you.